Hello, and a very warm welcome to this morning's reflection. Um, the church is full of scaffolding at the moment, but there's just two of us here this morning so far, and everything is beautiful and peaceful. I'm going to start today's reflection with a beautiful and very mysterious poem by the American poet James Wright. He died in, in 1980, so he's 20th century. And you can find a link to this poem on our YouTube page. If you scroll down just a little bit to show more, you'll find a link to the poem. It's called Lying in a Hammock at William Duffy's farm in Pine Island, Minnesota. Rather a long title, but the poem does pretty much what it says on the tin. The poet is lying in a hammock, slung, we presume, between two trees. It's a warm afternoon in, in a rural setting, and the poet is noticing things. I'll read the poem. Lying in a hammock at William Duffy's farm in Pine Island, Minnesota. Over my head, I see the bronze butterfly asleep on the black trunk, blowing like a leaf in green shadow. Down the ravine behind the empty house, the cowbells follow one another into the distances of the afternoon. To my right, in a field of sunlight between two pines, the droppings of last year's horses blaze up into golden stones. I lean back as the evening darkens and comes on. A chicken hawk floats over, looking for home. I have wasted my life. Now, if you haven't come across this poem before, I suspect that last line may have come as a real shock to you. It's pretty devastating, isn't it? I have wasted my life. It sounds perhaps like something close to despair. So why on earth, in view of this, am I using this particular poem in a reflection on finding meaning and purpose in life? Surely these reflections should be uplifting. Well, I have two reasons. My first reason has something to do with the poem itself, and my second reason has something to do with my faith, my Christian faith. I have to declare an interest from the beginning. I love this poem. And, <clears throat> excuse me, although I have suffered from depression, clinical depression myself, I have never actually found this poem depressing. On the contrary, I've found it quite the opposite. If you look online, you'll find lots of different interpretations. It's a, a poem which has been much analysed. Um, people have looked at it autobiographically. <clears throat> Does it say something about James Wright's own life? There are literary interpretations. There is psychological analysis of this poem. But I think, as with all poetry, it's best, first of all, to respond to it yourself. And I'm going to share my response with you. For me, most of this poem is absolutely beautiful. But it's beautiful, I think, in a very particular way. It describes nature, but it's not idyllic nature. For example, there's a building in the poem, but it isn't a, a mellow farmhouse with roses around the door of the, and the smell of baking emerging from the kitchen. No, it's just an empty house. There are glimpses of gold in the poem, but they're not clumps of lovely yellow flowers. They're actually horse dung, would you believe it? Old horse dung, which has somehow become fossilised in a kind of way and shiny. There's a bird overhead, but it isn't a poetic bird, a skylark, the lark ascending. It isn't a majestic eagle. It's a chicken hawk. 
Now, I'm no great expert on American birds, but I understand from the internet that this bird can be a bit of a nuisance to farmers because it preys on domestic fowl. So, in this poem, nature isn't idealised. Instead, we're giving, given nature as, as a realistic mixture of, of loveliness, for sure, and of things which are really rather ordinary. No, the beauty of the poem lies instead in the poet's vivid experience of this nature, of this place. He perceives it with such clarity, I think, and describes it with such simplicity. There's the colours, that bronze butterfly on the black trunk in green shadow, and the gold of that famous horse dung. The poet is, is noticing sounds, those cowbells in the distances of the afternoon, and he's noticing the light gradually fading into evening. And all of this intense observation becomes the context, the essential context, for that devastating last line. The poet experiences his surroundings that afternoon with piercing clarity. And then he has a moment of piercing clarity, of revelation, an epiphany about his own life. I've wasted my life. Now, very occasionally, this is something that somebody realises in a truly devastating situation. Um, imagine, for example, that you've dedicated your whole life to a single cause. Um, you've sacrificed perhaps family, friends, perhaps your own health to this one cause. And then one day, suddenly, you realise that the whole commitment has been a terrible mistake. Perhaps the whole thing's been a fraud and your whole life's work crumbles to dust. Now, tragically, such things do happen to people very, very occasionally, and tragically, some, sometimes people do die in such extreme circumstances. But this is not what's happening in this poem. And I would say, actually, generally, if a life can, has contained even a few moments of, of kindness or generosity, of, of um, gratitude or of prayer, that life has not been wasted. No, normally when this thought crosses somebody's mind, as it does from time to time, it's a useful thought. How can this be? If I look at my own life, there, at my own life, there has, of course, been waste, for sure. Um, my, my career path has been anything but smooth. Um, my career has gone along in fits and starts and I've barked up lots of wrong trees at great length. I've had failures in love. I've had time wasted in failing actually to love enough. I lost a whole decade of my life to illness. And I must confess that I've wasted some of my time in resentment, in jealousy. I've spent an awful lot of time being anxious. So yes, I probably have wasted a lot of my days. And I think if we're honest, this is true to a greater or larger extent of all of us. In every life, there will be, there will be patches of time or areas of waste. It is simply the human predicament. And this is where faith comes in. Now, there's a religious tradition, I think, of looking the hardest truths straight in the eye. Some religious traditions encourage, for example, that you should contemplate your own death. The faithful are encouraged to imagine in great detail what will happen to them before they die and actually what will happen to their body after death, which you may find a bit scary. But I think in the Christian tradition, we are safe 
completely safe to contemplate the time we have wasted. For this last week, I've, I've been starting my day with a very peculiar prayer, which goes something like this. Good morning, Lord. I've wasted a lot of my life so far, but today, Lord, and this feels like a useful prayer because Christian tradition teaches us that it is never too late. Whether we've got 60 years of life left or just a single day, it is never too late to start living. It's never too late to spend today well, whatever today has in store for me. It might be work, it might be doing something useful, helping somebody, organising something, being creative. It might be activity with people, listening or, or laughing with someone or playing. It might be relaxing, lying in a hammock perhaps, watching an animal or a bird. It might be resting today or convalescing or even drawing nearer to your own death well. It might be praying or simply sitting, which perhaps is close to prayer. But I'm discovering nowadays, um, in the light of my peculiar morning prayer, that God is telling me at the end of each day whether or not I have wasted my day. And of one thing I'm absolutely sure, that afternoon, James Wright, spent lying in his hammock, most certainly wasn't wasted. Because during that afternoon, he did two things. He was at one with nature, and he had a revelation about himself, a revelation which I believe can be of use to us all. Let's end with a tiny moment of prayer. Gracious God, help us look back on our lives so far with honesty and clarity. Help us look back just enough, not too much. And then help us live today. Help us use today to the full in whatever way you would have us use it. Amen. It's been good spending time with you. Goodbye.